Namaste and welcome, Sanmeji. It's such an honor and pleasure to be having this chat with you regarding your life journey and what community service as a karma yogi means to you. Um, I'm so happy you're such a well-qualified person, well-rounded person, as our scholars will shortly come to know. And I would like to start with um, having you speak a little bit about your childhood and your education, your family. Okay, Namaskar. Thanks for uh, inviting me and uh, putting me on the spot, like, uh, <laughs> so to say. Uh, hopefully, this will um, have impact on some people who are started the journey. So my background is basically I come from a very uh, ordinary middle class family, who, uh, and, but well educated and and uh, in in both the material world as well as the athletic world. My dad was a uh, devoted, um, I wouldn't say fully devoted to Vedantist, but he was a very spiritual man. My mom too, and then my whole environment is was quite spiritual. And um, so the first introduction to Karma Yoga, what is Karma Yoga, those ideas came from the roots in my family. Uh, educationally, you know, I was, uh, grew up in missionary school, so we had this um, parallel systems and cross comparison, which actually strengthened my belief and uh, <laughs> made me more of a Karma Yogi, more of a believer of, of our traditions. Um, than anything else, we I, I felt that we, we we I was lucky to be in a very rich tradition from India, and uh, that that really is the thread that continues throughout my life. So after finishing school, uh, <coughs> most of the schools were were pretty good schools in Calcutta, uh, the ones I went to. And then I went to a college called Presidency College, Calcutta, where I did my physics, master's in, um, bachelor's in physics. And then pretty soon I moved to engineering and, and computer science. And that those are the winds of the day. I pretty, pretty soon realized that the, my original goal of being a theoretical physicist was, was above my uh, brain scale. And, and was- I don't believe difficult. that. <laughs> <laughs> very, very difficult. I, I have seen very smart part, smarter than me, people who, who were um, doing theoretical physics, uh, you know, stop at some point. So it was a very hard subject. But anyway, that gave me a, that gave me a very intellectual uh, grounding. I, I, I know I've, I studied under the likes of Shatin Bosch and others. And so uh, the, the, the broadness and richness of thinking that, that uh, enhanced my uh, future journey also. So that's the reason I'm bringing that up. I came to USA. <clears throat> uh, so, so the string was continuing. My spiritual trends were there. I, I was helping a lot of people locally as well as through organizationally, through Ramakrishna Mission, through Vatsyavasam and other, other institutes, as well as individually on, a, on an individual level, one-to-one -one with local people, because a lot of, lot of uh, people needed help, uh, especially at that time. And then I moved to USA, uh, you know, in my early, in my mid twenties. And then um, uh, I, I started work as a, as a computer uh, guy, um, as a designer, programmer, uh, architect. And then eventually that took me to become the CI of the second largest public health institute uh, in in USA. So, and then I retired from there two years, two and a half years back, uh, just before COVID started. In fact, the moment COVID started, it so timed out well that, and uh, probably the hand of providence there. <clears throat> but during this whole process, I was always involved with yoga, with involved with some sort of seva. 
uh, and yoga is, is as a philosophy, but seva was kind of my this uh, karmic thing I was doing here and there in, in terms of different levels um, uh, through the temples, through other organizations, through educational organizations. And then um, last 10, 15 years, I really focused on yoga as parallel to my prof profession. I educated myself, I'm still educating myself. And yoga has given me, yoga then along with an adjunct of Ayurveda, I've done my level two Ayurveda already. So that has given me some tools. Previously, you know, the seva was, okay, go help somebody and, you know, physically or give some food or this and that. And then that was fine. I still, I still would like to do that. I wouldn't get done some seva locally here. Uh, through my temple, through interfaith, and I'm involved in the interfaith community. However, <clears throat> yoga, Ayurveda, and this whole thing which, which I got from HCI on the on the chaplaincy front in the last in the right thing has given a new dimension to the applicability of this whole thing. So uh, I'm focusing on um, being a uh, interfaith chaplain in one way. I'm, I'm doing my PhD in yoga and doing my Ayurveda MD and all that stuff is going on. So it's a huge commitment to, at my age, to uh, uh, to do this and uh, money-wise also it's a huge commitment. Nothing is free. Yeah, it's very impressive. I remember when we did your bio, um, we both graduated in uh, 20, I think we right, were the right, same right, right. And uh, you had two lines of degrees, certificates, qualifications. And I said, <laughs> what do you want to give up? I don't have room here. I do remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I have some uh, attachment to some of those, uh, which I should be, uh, I, I think, getting out of it. <laughs> no, the, the reason I, I, I sometimes state that, that itself uh, shows my progression from material science to spiritual science. That's why I emphasize that. Otherwise, I have to say a lot of things. I did this, I did that. Uh, I think the degree, the progression of the degree would, uh, would tell you the progression of my life. So that's that's why. Uh, nothing not to show off degrees because I, I know a lot of people have a lot more degrees and uh, a lot of higher degrees. So that's that's I understand that very well. And I'm not not that showing off of a, of a person. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. So, so the the other thing is, <laughs> so during those uh, those last 10, 15 years, I've been studying yoga, uh, practicing yoga, uh, and then I quickly moved into yoga therapy. And uh, yoga therapy is also there. You know, do this for this, do this for that. Was there all the way through because I learned from my family, but. Uh, I really learned formally from SPSA and other institutes, Kerala Ayurveda. This is the place where I'm going for my Ayurveda. And I'm learning, still learning, and continues to continue to learn. Um, the, the applicability of yoga and Ayurveda as an alternate system of healing, as an alternate system of medicine, that can really help people specifically in the last phases of their lives or in a, in a critical condition, you know, whether it's uh, cancer, whether it's, you know, deep depression, whether, you know, so many, I mean, during the COVID times, we, we saw that so many, many cases like that. Can you give us specific examples, share some examples where uh, what you saw, like my patients, my yes, know, yes, and, I can, and... I can very well uh, give one example which is which stuck with me, and then as I'm going through my GTU courses, there was a case study which is very similar to that, and I, I was just just okay, mind blown by that. So I had a, a friend of mine who a uh, very close friend of mine who uh, died of cancer, lung cancer. So as he was going through the process, uh, I was you know, trying to help him through yoga because he had a lot of aches and pains and the impact of chemo uh, through different yogic postures, breathing and, and, and that stuff. And you know, um, at one, one point of, uh, of his journey, uh, he said that, you know, I am seeing 
he is seeing his his parents and my in-laws who were who were who also passed away by that time. This is only a couple of years back. And he was seeing them very distinctly. And then he said, Don't think I'm imagining. I actually saw them. Okay. And his wife and kids, his two daughters, were, really got spooked. Okay. And they were saying, you know, what's what's going on? What's happening? You know, I think he's in delirium and all that. A very similar case study I was reading up in my GTU class is uh, a similar a girl who said, who, who opened up to the chaplain saying, I was dancing with God. And, uh, and then the, when the doctor, when he, the chaplain mentioned to the oncologist, the oncologist was saying, this is called delirium, folks. And, and so and hence and hence. And then the chaplain then pushed back later on saying, you know, um, you know, you, you, this is a process of healing. So why would you take that away? And, um, and I, I was, I was surprised that I did very similar thing with my friend. And when, when they were saying that, and since they belong, belong to the same culture and, um, and spiritual system, I told, I told uh, his wife, look, you shouldn't be, even if you think that way, if you're spooked, don't show that to him. Because this is also a process of how he is processing the whole universe right now. And, and you, you cannot always say that what you are saying or what you are processing is the only way. There are other ways of processing the system. Uh, if you say that, then all our rishis are, are, are some, uh, had spooky experiences, you know, because when you go from the realm of real material to the realm of the uncertain in, in our minds, there are a lot of things happen which the normal standard science cannot define. So, uh, and then they, they, she realized it and then she handled it and she calmed down. So, and, and the, the chaplain here in, in the case study, did the, you probably remember that, that story, that, that um, the, you know, in the GTU course. So I, I was very um, surprised and, and, uh, and in a way very, I patted my back that I did very similar thing that, that what the chaplain did over it. And this is a recognition of that, of the human um, you know, mind and, and spirituality that there are alternate reality that needs to be. This is just an example. And there are so many other examples. Uh, there is another, um, Seva I did with a lady who was doing uh, uh, yoga with me. I, I do a lot of interoceptive yoga. Um, uh, I can focus on that and have been focusing for the last five years. Uh, now a lot of people are coming up with that, the same kind of um, process. Um, but at that time it wasn't there. Much. But she this is like a few years back. And she just called me and said, you know what, you, you saved my life. I said, oh, how would I save your life? I don't, I don't know what you are talking about. She said that she could early detect her breast cancer because of the techniques she was doing with me. And she felt something, went to the doctor. Doctor said, uh, in the first oncology said, no, nothing there. Then she went to a second opinion. The second opinion, doctor found something. And then he also said, yes, you can. If you're sensitive to your body's senses, uh, you can figure out what's going, uh, going on in your body much early than what these machines will do. So, um, so that was another thing that you know, I, I probably uh, helped the person in uh, making the right decisions for our health and, and, and mind. And I, I worked with her day and night on doing you know, over the phone um, especially during COVID times, so over the phone, you know, uh, meditation, spiritual practices. So it's uh, uh, so these are these are the things, and you know, in, during COVID times, we, you know, from HCI and from uh, from my my temple and from other institutes that I've been working with, um, we have helped a lot of people through pranayama, through breathing, through meditation. And um, I don't know of anybody in our group who, who, who was diagnosed with COVID. I mean, that was kind of an amazing thing. You know, that all these people, most of them are, you know, 60 plus and um, the most vulnerable population. Uh, and um, they, they did not, you know, um, have, uh, or, you know, 
get COVID. Um, and in none of those people, I don't know of anybody who got COVID. So I'm I'm saying that some of these processes work. So you know, in 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 the chaplaincy also, they talk about calming practices. They have tools. So what I what I understand from the little bit of reading in the, in the process of chaplaincy is that we in the Indian tradition, in the Hindu tradition, and, and other traditions also. I'm not only going to be biased about one process, but definitely a very rich tradition uh, comes from the Vedic traditions, and that tradition has so many tools and techniques and processes which can be applied so effectively in seva, in seva of different kinds, whether you save a person's health, save a person's you know, mental health, whether you, you, you also help a person's physical health, uh, or you know, even, even um, you know, financially or, or otherwise, if you want to help somebody, uh, you, know, you, can, you can rebuild or you can help rebuild a person so that that person can take take care of himself or herself. I think that's that's where I'm focusing on for the next few years of my life. Um, the last moments of a human being, which are, you know, very very sometimes very, um, it can become very um, you know, um, traumatic for a lot of people. A lot of very successful people in the last oh, years yeah. of their life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can see it, if you, you know, applicable to myself also. And I, I'm training my kids from this. I'm training, tell them, look, this is how uh, this is going to happen. And I'm applying, I have a granddaughter, I'm applying some Ayurveda on her. And I'm training my kids and telling my kids, look, uh, you know, we have, we have, we have theoretically talked about it and you guys have done some yoga and some use some Ayurvedic techniques and this and that and other things. However, now it is time for you to really understand this because you may have to apply that to me or mom. <laughs> you know, so um, see, this is the process which actually enriching me. You know, the seva, karma yoga, listen, karma yoga, you know, it uh, sounds esoteric, you know, you're doing karma for others selflessly. It's, it's, it's for yourself. Basically, you're doing it for yourself, you know? Why well, every day I do yoga and so many, you know, totally free classes for, you know, at one time I was doing 10 classes a week. But everybody's saying, why are you doing free classes? I said, this is giving me much more than, you know, if I uh, charge yes. money. Yes. You know, I, I mean, every time I do, every time I interact, mm -hmm. it's enriching me. That, that enrichment you cannot buy with money. Uh, yeah. So in and a way, I'm, I'm, I'm a selfish then that guy. enrichment you lose. <laughs> I yeah. don't have to be a selfish guy because like, I, want to, I want to get <laughs> something out of it. Yeah. But um, that, is, that is the definition of karma. Very really simply put, you do your stuff, you do what you feel like doing, you do it with others. If they get help, that will be fine. Uh, and in the process, if you do it without much, stipulations you gain you gain much more you know and yeah. that's the whole philosophy yeah. so thank you so much uh Sanmeji. you know um scholars this this is the thought i want you to have um this is a gentleman right from childhood his qualifications his interests he has prepared himself to the point of retirement where now with varied skills, he's able to contribute to society and he's crowning it all with hopefully soon a certificate in IC, from ICP in interfaith chaplaincy, which will legitimize his service in this country. Wish you all the best, Sanmeji, and such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for choosing me as your subject. Oh, it Hopefully. was no difficulty picking you, believe me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Namaskar. Namaskar. Uh -huh. Namaskar.